welcome back to my channel. <sighs> Let's talk about the 23 books from my backlist that I have to read in 2023. So I do this challenge for myself every year, obviously adding a book for the book of the year as we go through the 2020s. Um, but this year, I'm really excited about it. We've got some good ones. We've got some ones that have been on previous lists, and this doesn't even count all of the series that I want to try to get to this year and complete. There's a lot of things, guys, that have been just sitting on my shelves for far too long that we need to get in and get done. These are kind of the one-offs, like I said, backlist. These are any new releases, just stuff that's been sitting on my shelves that aren't part of series that I need to read. Let's get into it. Okay. I'm not going to really cover a lot of these just because I don't know what a lot of them are about, so we're just going to kind of really quickly flash through these, um, but in no particular order. The first one is The Secret Life of Albert Enthwistle by Matt Kane. This follows a mailman in a sleepy small London town where basically he is uh, supposed to be done with his service, forced into retirement, wants to try and figure out the next step in his life. I think this is going to read very similarly to... TJ Klune's books, like a lot of things in that vein, but maybe a little more realistic. I'm very excited about this, and I think it's going to be really, really cute. Next, I want to read Verity, a staple here on the booktube community space by Colleen Hoover. This is a murder mystery about a girl named Ashlyn, Lowen Ashlyn, um, who basically is helping... A guy named Jeremy who's a writer. I don't really want to know a whole lot going into this. This is such a loved book. I think it's going to be really good. I've read a couple of Colleen Hoover's other books and enjoyed them. I'm excited for this. Okay, for a little bit of some non-fiction, I want to read I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurney. This was such a huge book this last year in the non-fiction section. Jeanette McCurney being a girl from iCarly was huge in the Nickelodeon world. And I think this book is just going to be really interesting. And along with The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Mon Manson, just something I think that's just standard good to read. I love having a couple self-help books on these lists. I think they're just nice to include. Next, for another self-help book, we've got Lisa Turkoset's Good Boundaries and Goodbyes. This is one of my favorite self-help authors. She just writes so poignantly about relationships and love and how to connect best with people, and I am excited to read her new book that came out this year, so I think this will be a really, really good read. Two more new releases that came out in 2022 that I have to get to next year or for 2023 are... Gleanings by Neil Schusterman. This is in the Scythe world. It is a like sense of stories from Arc of the, of the Scythe series. I loved that series. One of my favorites that I've read in recent years. So I was so excited when I found out this was coming out. I think it's going to be so good. And the sequel to Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is book two in the Celestial Kingdoms duology Heart of the Sun Warrior. I think this is going to also be fantastic by Sue Lin Tan. Look at that cover. It's going to be good. I didn't get to it last year. It came out at the end of last year. It's going to be good. I just, I know it. Okay, for a couple that have been sitting on my shelves for far too long that need to just be read, this is Replica by Lauren Oliver. I think this is maybe one of the oldest books on my shelves that I have still kept and have not read. If I don't read it by the end of this year, I can't. I have to. It's a signed first edition. I have to read it. Even if it's garbage at this point, it's a matter of pride. I have to read it. It's going to be so bad if I don't. Along with The Astonishing Cover, Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan. This is a book that was really huge a couple years back on BookTube. So popular. So many people enjoyed it. And again, it's been on so many of my read lists for the last few years that I just need to get to it. There's no excuse. I have to. Along with Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld. This is again another book that has been on my shelves for far too long. I love Scott Westerfeld's books. The Ugly series was one of my favorite series in high school. I need to read this book. I've started it multiple times, haven't finished it. I have no excuses. I have no why. Why? It needs to happen this year. 
It's going to happen. Mark my words. Okay, another new release that came out last year that I did not get to the new Taylor Jenkins read book, Carrie Soto is back. This is a spinoff of Malibu Rising with a character from that book. I liked Malibu Rising. It was fine. It wasn't my favorite, but I think this one will be good. It's about a tennis star. I'm excited. I think it'll be good. I really do enjoy most of her books, so I think it'll be great. Okay, we're going to speed through these. I've been doing a lot of filming today. My voice is starting to... So we're going to just be quick. If you have questions about them, let me know down in the comments below. This is Afterward by Jeff Jennifer Manitou. This is about a boy that gets kidnapped and then gets kidnapped and then gets released by the kidnapper and kind of the aftermath of everything that happens with him. It seems really dark, very heavy book, but I think it's going to be so good and I'm really excited to read it. Excited? It's not the right word. I think it's just going to be really, really good. Another one that I think is just going to be really, really heartfelt is For Today I Am a Boy by Kim Fu. This is a transgender story, I think. Potentially. It's a debut novel. Um, yeah, I, again, don't really want to know too much about this. Um, but yeah, I just think it'll be really poignant, really good. One of those that's been speaking to me. Next, we have When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. I love Kelly Barnhill's writing so much. I think this is her first foray into adult books. It seems so good. This is basically about, let's see, a girl named Alex who women all of a sudden get turned into dragons. It's a speculative novel. I think it's just going to be so good and feminist and empowering and strong and badass. And like, it's just, it's going to be good. It came out last year. Why I haven't read it yet. Okay, let's go through a couple middle grade real quick that everybody knows and loves that just need to be read. The Life of Pi by Yann Martel. Pretty self-explanatory. Never read, need to be read. It just, it needs to happen. Wind in the Willows. I read this as a kid and really enjoyed it by Kenneth Graham. I think this is a beautiful edition. And again, why have I not read it? I don't know. Uh, this is The Tale of Despero by Kate Camillo. Again, a beautiful, wonderful book that I just really would love to read and know and experience. And she's also the author of Because of Winn-Dixie, which was one of my favorite books as a kid. A beautiful book that I would love to read is Peter Pan and Wendy by J.M. Barry. I think this just looks stunning. It seems like such a beautiful read. I want to reread it. I read Peter Pan a few years back and enjoyed it. I just think this will be a really fun one to read because it's just visually beautiful. All right, another self-help book. This is Finding God's Will for My Life by Mike Doheny. This is the guy from 10th Avenue North, which is a Christian band and uh, artist that I really enjoy. Straightforward, poignant, finding your life within free will of God, I think will be really interesting. It seems pretty short. I'm hoping I'll love it. All right, I'm seriously losing my voice. So we're just going to speed through these. Circe by Madeline Miller. Classic, loved on Goodreads, book reads, all the reads, Greek mythology retelling. I think it's going to be great. Uh, one that came out last year that I didn't get a chance to get to, uh, Family of Liars, which is the prequel to We Were Liars, which is one I loved in high school by E. Lockhart. I think this is going to be good. Some of E. Lockhart's books for me are a little hit or miss, so I'll be interested to see how this one kind of plays into that We Were Liars vibe, but I think I'll enjoy it. Historical Fiction, They Went Left by Monica Hesse. This is one that I think came out this year or 2021 uh, about a girl who gets separated from her brother, I think in Nazi war camps, and I think they're trying to come back together. I think it just seems good. I know I need to read it. It's on the list. We're going to get to it this year. The Continuation to Black Hearts. This is Black Soul by Nicole Casterman. I liked Black Hearts. This is basically a story of Blackbeard origin. The way the first one started, this I think will hopefully have much more piratey elements to it, which I think will be really enjoyable. I'll be interested to see how it all wraps up. Okay. And breathe. The last two that I would love to read in 2023 are 
Serafina by Rachel Hartman and Why We Broke Up by Daniel Hadler. This is a, I think, nonfiction of a relationship with items in it that speak to the reasons of why this couple broke up. I've tried to read it a few times. I think it's just going to be good. I think I'm going to really enjoy it. There's that. And if I haven't mentioned it already in other videos, I really want to have a month sometime, I think, in the summer where I'm reading dragon books. I did in my book outlet haul show a few of the ones I'm considering. If you have other dragon books to recommend, please let me know down in the comments below. I loved reading them as a kid and would love to read more. So if you have any you recommend, I know this is a super popular one, please let me know. And I think it'll be a really, really fun time. So yeah, there you go, guys. There are the 23 books that I'm going to really desperately try to read in 2023. I was really garbage about my 2022 list, if I'm being honest. I think I only hit three of the books on that list from last year. So here's hoping this year will be better. But let me know down in the comments below what backlist you would love to get to in 2023. Subscribe to see more of my face. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.